I'm Orlando Patterson, a professor of sociology here at Harvard University. I work on a range of subjects in historical sociology and contemporary sociology. And um, the two countries I'm most involved with are America and the Caribbean, especially Jamaica. A forthcoming book of mine is on Jamaica. It's called The Confounding Island, Culture, Institutions, and Misdevelopment in Postcolonial Jamaica. Jamaica is a small island, but has a reputation out of all proportion to its size. It is, uh, as the world knows, um, it has some of the fastest running people in the world. <laughs> It is, um, its music is global, reggae, um, and um, it has in many ways uh, confounded people because in spite of these very inspiring uh, aspects, it also has a bad reputation of being one of the most violent places in the world. Um, it also has contributed in many ways to um, a range of problems which social scientists are in, in interested in, which puzzle social scientists, like the fact that it had a very high life expectancy in spite of the fact that it's a relatively poor society. Uh, it has created a religion, Rastafarianism, which is um, global now in scope. And what I try to do in this book is to explain Jamaica and its problems, explain why it, in spite of its resources and the fact that it has many um, talented people, it has failed to really develop to its potential economically. And um, at the same time, I try to explain why, in, in spite of the fact that it's a, it has a thriving democracy, it nonetheless is so violent. And one of the, the puzzles I try to pull out of the specific problems of Jamaica has more broader implications. So for example, in looking at why Jamaican democracy is so violent, I ask, is its violence connected to its democracy? It's often said that democracy is inherently peaceful or promotes peace. But could it be that democracy um, creates uh, turmoil? And um, I do the same thing when I look at development to see whether it is good policies or institutions that create development. So Jamaica becomes not only a society interesting in itself, but one that um, allows us to look at broader problems in the world. Well, the question I, uh, broader question I address there is, um, does globalization lead to cultural homogenization or Americanization, as a lot of people claim. And um, I push back against that argument by saying, no, it often does the opposite. Uh, it generates local responses, which then lead to new creations. And reggae is a good illus illustration of that. Reggae actually began under the powerful influence of black American uh, blues music. And uh, at first, it seems as if Jamaica was just be swamped by this music. But then the local musicians responded by bringing their own local uh, rhythms and inflections, uh, the result being uh, ska and then reggae. So the point here is that people never passively receive global uh, influences. They um, take them over and use their own resources to generate new creations. The interesting thing then is that Jamaican music was powerfully influenced by Southern black American music in the late 40s, early 50s. And at one time, it seemed as if uh, Jamaica was being overwhelmed. But then local musicians under that influence drew upon their own local music, mento. And in that hybridization, created a new music, which became, became known to the world as reggae. Started off as ska, then it became rock steady, then it became reggae. But then something interesting happened. Jamaicans started migrating to America in great numbers, to uh, New York. And in the Bronx, they brought over with them uh, early reggae, which then began to influence 
local black American youth, uh, people like um, uh, DJ Cool Herc and um, Grandmaster Flash. And out of that blending of black American and Jamaican music emerged the thing you know as hip hop. So here you see how the global influences move in, 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 in really fascinating ways. The term we use sometimes is glocalization instead of globalization. Glocalization meaning that people do not passively accept what are the outside influences, but take it over and um, sort of blend it with their own traditions and out pops new creations. And that's the history of um, popular music all over the world because reggae has also strongly influenced British music and um, it's influenced African popular music. Uh, it's even influential in Indonesia and Japan. So glo globalization does not mean the homogenization of the world cultures, but rather stimulates uh, local cultures in this global process.